I'm up to the mosaic stage or the design stage. And when I created this gazing ball substrate, I had a little bit of a problem when I was applying the Paltea because the gazing ball or the gym ball actually went a little bit down and it made it difficult to actually get a really nice coating on part of the area. It didn't create a huge problem, but it did, you know, it didn't do as well as what I'd hoped. So that particular area is this area here. And this is going to become the bottom of the ball. So no one's really going to see this area, but I need to take that into consideration. So what I thought I would do is uh, I would create a very simple design and I'm really looking at uh, taking that area there, around that area there, and I'm going to mosaic the rest in flowers. And in this bottom area, I'm just going to do different uh, design patterns and fill them with color because again, no one is really going to see this area because it's going to be on the bottom. So I don't want to put a huge amount of effort into creating uh, you know, all flowers over this whole top area when, when it's not going to be seen, but it does need something. So I think adding a bit of bold color around this base area will also help to highlight the flowers over the rest of it. But I, I need to remember that I'm actually going to be working upside down. So all I'm looking at doing is and I'm not doing any measuring. I'm really just going to draw a simple pattern in chalk like that. Just a bit of a wave. And then I'm going to, and of course if you do this and you make a mistake, it's not an issue because you can just wipe it off with a, um, a damp cloth. And all I'm going to do is just create some lines like that through it. Just divide it up into sections. As you can see, it's nothing startling, but it is going to add a little bit of interest to it. And then what I'll do is I'll do these sections in different colors, and this is going to be on the underside, and you will still see part of it, but you're not going to see that overall shape that I'm really not happy with on the, on the top, which will, which will become the bottom. Well, I'm up to the exciting stage now of filling in with glass. Now I've added a few more lines in this area here because some of those areas were quite large. So I've just added a few more lines just to break them up. Now what I'm looking at doing is creating one area with a particular color stained glass, that area with another color, that area with another color. Now over here I've got a little bench set up. I've got a plastic container to catch any shards. If some go on the floor, it's not a big problem. So all I'll do is just vacuum those up. And I'm going to be using the QEP Extreme Double Wheeled Nippers. And every time I use these, I usually get a lot of people asking, what are they and where do I get them from? So I just wanted to let you know that these are the nippers that I'm going to be using, the QEP Extreme Double Wheeled Nippers. So I'm pretty well good to go. I'm going to be using this container of glass. And one of the advantages to doing something large like this in a sphere is that you don't have to worry about cutting your glass into very small pieces. If I was doing a very small gazing ball, then I would need to cut these up smaller so that they sit flat. But being on a large sphere, that sits there really quite well and I don't have to cut that up any further as far as that size. I will have to cut the glass to fit in to where I want and to the shape. But other than that, that's about it. Now the adhesive I'm going to be using is going to be thin set. Now for those people in Australia, don't go shopping online or going into your retail store asking for thin set. You need to ask for a cement based adhesive. Now there are adhesives you could use. However, I find that thin set works really well for me and I find it very easy to control. And if I do happen to get into a little bit of a mess, it's much easier. I find it very easy to clean up. So let's get into the video and start cutting and adhering. Well, I've rotated the gazing ball a little bit because I'm going to be working in this area and I thought it would be easy for me to work in because it's up a little bit higher and also easy for you to have a look as well. If I had have left it down here, it would have been a bigger chance of the tessera sliding off. So I think it's going to be better here to work in. I've also cut a piece of tessera, so I'm pretty well Good to go. I think that's the piece. Nope, that's the piece here I cut. So I'm just going to put that in there like that and we're going to be pretty good. All right, now I'm going to use my little baggy system and I'm going to be applying a little bit just in here. So it's going to be a little bit of a 
Blobby Squish. Not a, not a real lot, but enough to hold it in place and also to cover the back of it. There you go. And then I can get another piece. I'll just use my texter here because I'm looking for a nice curve in that piece there. Don't want a dramatic curve, but just a gentle curve. That might be it. Yep, that's about it. I'll just cut that bit off the bottom. Much better. So another blobby squish. Now I am going to be, I'm going to have to be very careful about getting this white thin set in the grout lines because I'm actually going to be grouting this in black, lidocol black epoxy grout. So I have to make sure that I don't fill up the grout lines with the white because there won't be enough room for the black grout. Normally what I'll do is I'll use the same color as what I'm going to be grouting in. Unfortunately, because I want to use white, because some of these pieces I've chosen are going to be semi-transparent, I need to cover the backs with the white thin set and use white because I don't want anyone to be able to see through to the gazing ball. You can also apply it to the tessera as well if you want to, the thin set. It's another way of doing it if you'd like to do that, but I find applying it to the substrate is easy for me and really quite a bit less messier. But that's just me. I can be a messy worker. Just to give you a bit of an update, I've done a bit more of the glass and I think it's looking really quite good. I love these streaks of purples and pinks in through some of the uh, tessera. I think that looks amazing and uh, it's really a beautiful glass to use. Now I've yet to take off the pen marks, but I'll either do that once this section has fully cured or wait until I do this whole section and then wait until that's fully cured and then remove the pen marks. Just one thing is if you're not used to using thin set, one of the things that you can do is when you apply the tessera down and the thin set squeezes out, you can remove the excess thin set as you go. But what I like to do is I like to let it sit there for around about 15 minutes to 20 minutes and then I like to then move it away. Now the reason why I like to do that is if you do it straight away once you've applied the tessera down and the thin set squeezed out and you then try and remove it, it can squish everywhere. So by leaving it for around about the 15 to 20 minute mark, you can then just get there and move it. It moves away in a section, so it's, it's not squishy. It works really, really well. And probably further into the video, I'll just show you that anyway so that you can get a good, uh, a good look at it. So anyway, I'll continue on. I've yet to uh, remove some of this thin set that's on the tessera, but that's really going to come off really quite easy. Even the next day, that will be uh, easily removed. Well, I've completed this first section here and I think it looks really good. I'm loving the glass, I'm loving the textures, and I'm also loving the colors. It's a very vibrant glass, and I am really uh, enjoy using it, I think it's great. Now I'm on to the second section, I'm using a yellow and white wispy glass, and I was going to butt the colors up together, so the, these were going to butt up to this orangey red color here, but I decided against that, and then I thought I might put very narrow black tiles around these lines, and then I decided against that. I thought, why do that when I'm going to be using Lidocol Black Epoxy Grout, which is going to fill up those grout lines, uh, and it's going to make these sections really pop. So that's what I've decided I'm going to do, and it's also going to save me a bit of work from cutting up more tiles. Now I know that once I add the Black Epoxy Grout to the yellow, 
it is going to fragment it, but because this is on this particular ball here, and uh, on the bottom, and it's not, it's not like it's a mural on a wall, I don't see that as an issue in this particular case, because normally I wouldn't use a dark grout on a light colored test unless it's part of your design. But in this particular case, because it's going to have other colors around it, it's gonna look fine, it's gonna look really good. Now, I've put this piece of tessera down here, and I've got thin set coming out here, it's oozing out everywhere. Now, if I'm butting another piece up to that, that's not too bad. Uh, I can scrape it down a bit. But if I wanna get rid of that, because it is an excess amount, and so I'm going to be you know, stopping for the day or whatever, if I was to scrape that away now, the tessera moves quite easily, which I don't want it to, but also it's still gooey, it's still sticky. So it's messy. When I do it, I leave it for around about uh, 20 minutes and then I come back. Now here's some here, and I'll just wipe that. Now here's some here, and all I'm going to go in, and I'll come down from the top. Now I've just put that piece in there so I won't do that piece, but if I go in here, I can just remove that easily. See how it just comes away? And it falls away. So it has a crust on it, but it's not fully cured. So I find, in a lot of cases, I'll leave it uh, for around about 20 minutes just to make sure that it's getting a crust on it and I find that's easy to remove, especially when it's in between grout lines and I don't have to worry about, you know, it's squishing out everywhere. Well, I'm chipping away, I've done one, two, three, four, five, and I've just completed that one just then, and I've got one, two, three, four, five, six more to go. So I'm really up to doing another one, but before I go further, uh, I just want to let you know, I'm cutting into a container, and I'm pulling out, when I've finished with each color, I'm pulling out all the large pieces, all the reasonable sized pieces of shards, and I'm putting them in a plastic bag, because I'm saving these, because I do find that when you were doing this, or any mosaic, it's always good to have small shards left over where you, you can use them in uh, you know, small gaps. How, however, in saying that, I'm not keeping the very minute shards like those ones there. I'm not keeping those at all. It's really reasonable size shards. Uh, I know some people keep every single thing, but really, for me, I'm not going to go down that path. So I just thought this is a really good tip to do. Put the shards in the plastic bag, put them in with that container there for the moment because I'll be using this again uh, at a later date. So that's what I'm doing and I find that works really well for me. I've got a cloth here to wipe off any excess um, thin set from my uh, tool that I just dropped on the ground and any lumps of thin set I just put in this container as I'm going, as I'm clearing away or like I just showed you before, you know, if there's a piece down there, I let it set for around about you know, 15, 20 minutes and then remove it. And then it goes in this container here. And then after I finished with each color, I empty the containers so it keeps it all nice and neat uh, because I don't really wanna work in a really uh, messy environment. So I'll come back when this is completely finished, this top area, and hopefully it's going to look quite good.